Much of my professional photography is accomplished with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II Plus the 12 to 100 Pro lens, which would set you back at least £2,000, possibly a bit more. Financially, this may be beyond the reach of some photographers, especially beginners. Therefore, it can be a salutary lesson to achieve similar results with gear costing much less. With that in mind, this program is conducted with the entry-level OMD EM10 Mark II, not the latest model, and the 14 to 150 lens, sometimes christened rather uncharitably by pro lens photographers as the fantastic plastic. This could be a good investment if you don't like carrying heavy camera gear. Swanking around with an Olympus Pro Lens or even the most expensive Nikon or Canon does not make you a better photographer and certainly no more than owning a Hasselblad or Leica in the days of film. Some photographers might be concerned by the loss of one stop between wide angle and telephoto. Nevertheless, this is a real life review where I am producing pictures and not numbers and graphs. Look elsewhere for a technical appraisal. Having been brought up on traditional photographic techniques since 1959, I am not going to give up a lifetime habit only to end up submissive to the latest technology. I tell the camera what to do, but certain advances in the technology are important and will be mentioned, but I won't allow them to swamp my artistic inspiration. A visit to Morden Hall Park in South London with friends using Croydon Tramlink provided photo opportunities within the scope of most photographers that do not require a special or privileged entry card. Therefore, the shoot is totally meaningful. It is a National Trust open property, so you don't have to be a member. Of particular interest is the mill complete with water wheel. My morning visit restricted me to against the light photography or contre jour if you want the posh word. Because of the very high dynamic range it is a test for any camera, lens and indeed the photographer. I spot metered off a highlight, saved to raw and corrected underexposed shadows in Adobe Lightroom. This risks noise, but, in my opinion, blown out highlights that cannot be corrected, they are much worse. We continue to Addington Hills, a great viewpoint for London, but you need the sun to be in the right position. Had to wait for the foreground illumination, but I also found the extra telephoto facility of the 14 to 150 lens a great benefit for getting in closer to Canary Wharf. Even under the strain of the bus pass and senior rail card, the shot is successfully handheld. The shutter speed, well, that is a 640th of a second. I like to think that I am a reasonably fit person, but if I cannot handhold this, then perhaps I'd better see my doctor. Nearby is Coombe Wood Gardens, small and modest in appearance, but full of vibrant colour even in October and free to enter. Bit more contre-jour and backed by a dark background provided to spot meter of the shrub it stands out. I had a day out to Bateman's, Rudyard Kipling's home in Sussex, now in the care of the National Trust, but it had a very, very dark interior. In recent years, the National Trust have allowed photography inside their properties, but no tripods and no flash, so I handheld. 
the combination of the EM10 Mark II and the 14-150 lens may not have the sophistication of my usual camera, but even by keeping the ISO at 200 for optimum quality, the results are still very pleasing. Most rooms are protected from bright light by blinds, but where they are absent, there is an enormous dynamic range between outdoor highlights and the dark interiors. Here I spot metered quite close to the window, allowing the outside to become slightly overexposed and the interior underexposed. It takes a bit of practice to get the balance right. I adjust these extremes in Lightroom based on experience, and the changes, as you can see, are quite extreme. A short drive to Bodium Castle provided some photographic light relief. It had clouded over, but later it parted allowing a hazy sun to provide some atmospheric modelling to the fabric of the castle. A week in Scotland running one of my last photographic holidays provided a dramatic change of scenery where we were at the mercy of weather. The hotel borders Loch Leven at North Balahulish, ideal for early morning and late evening shots, as well as other times. This shot was taken mid-morning as clouds were parting the shafts of sunlight creating an enormous dynamic range again and requiring careful and precise exposure control. I tend to spot meter highlights with the help of the electronic finder, then save to RAW and correct dark shadows in Adobe Lightroom. There were also several opportunities to look for patterns and textures in the landscape. Later, a coach tour took us to the head of Loch Leven. Being autumn, the sun, well that's now much lower in the sky, it's sinking behind high mountains and casting quite heavy shadows across the water. However, just before Kinloch Leven, the road executes a sharp bend, revealing an extensive view back down the loch. The mountains provide the perfect compositional counterpoint, particularly when zooming in towards full telephoto, emphasising the local atmosphere, so important in this particular view. It's clouded over, which in my opinion makes the big view rather difficult. At Glencoe Locken, a favourite location of mine, we were thwarted by essential safety works to the dam, resulting in a drawn down water level that exposed rather muddy banks, so I concentrated instead on reflections. Afterwards, following a tour of a rather dreary looking Glencoe, we were treated to the newly rebuilt King's House Hotel for tea, and with a few friends. Tuesday was not good, a lot of cloud and drizzle. This time I withdrew to the church at Glenfinnan, but returned just in time for the Hogwarts Express, crossing that iconic viaduct. Later, light relief and a quick trip to Loch Eel did give us some better light. Had a rest day on Wednesday, so I was fit for, well, some kind of purpose. The next day, a tour of Sunat and Moidart in this rather nice and comfortable coach with driver to match. I encountered a bit of rain at 
strontium. But the low level light was perfect for a quarter, yes, a quarter of a second exposure and handheld with the EM10 Mark II. No filters to reduce light. I prefer to wait for the right weather and the right setting, which is really no more difficult than waiting for the right and real, yes, real rainbow. But thankfully it improved. You need the right sort of sun at Castle Turem, otherwise everything just falls flat on its face. The castle is at the far end of a causeway, and I nearly got everyone stranded with the fast incoming tide. Time for the long jump, or perhaps the hop, skip and jump. Weather, and you get plenty of that in Scotland, was just as important at Loch Eilot, where we stopped for a rainbow. Well, actually, not one, but two. Subjects like this can be created in a computer or with the addition of a filter, but they are more impressive and meaningful when it is a real McCoy. Anyone can be a fraud, and it is far more satisfying when it happens for real, especially when you are accompanied by 11 photographers. Photography is not a perfect science, and whilst I choose to use Lightroom, to put back what the camera cannot always achieve. I am careful not to make apologies for this fantastic technology. You should have gathered by now that for this YouTube production, I have only used the 14 to 150 Zuiko lens on the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II camera, working only with light and not a technical specification. I have used on these tours nothing else except, yes, except two stout legs. They are posing as my tripod, which unfortunately are not good enough for public exhibition, and Adobe Lightroom for post-production adjustments. On this occasion, the lens is not borrowed from Olympus, but remains in my equipment arsenal, and so does the camera. Whilst I will now return to the 12 to 100 Pro lens and my faithful EM1 Mark II, the 14 to 150 is, it is half the price of the Pro lens. It is much lighter and, in my opinion, exceptional value for what it can achieve. I leave it up to you to decide if it is a good investment, hoping that my images stand as testament.